Hi everyone, Jonathan here again with what might seem like a bit of an obvious one, at least to those of you who know your moderately esoteric Second World War assassin weapons. There's a well rod on the table in front of me. If you're not aware of it, it is essentially a giant silencer or sound suppressor, bolt action with a rotating disc on the back and then this magazine pistol grip on the bottom. Um, Maybe we'll do another video on the, on the well rod or some variant of it later on at some point. But it's only here today as a jumping off point to show you our real mystery weapon of the moment, which is this. You can sort of see the family resemblance to the well rod. Um, I can, right away I'll tell you this is actually called the sleeve gun. Now, as some of you will know, the well part of the names of these devices comes from Welling Garden City. Um, where there was a, a big country house, still is a big country house, called uh, the Frith. I, th I think it's pronounced. I've never actually asked anybody that one. F-R-Y-T-H-E. And this was used in the Second World War as Station 9 of Special Operations Executive. The sneaky beaky, assassinating uh, well, Special Operations Unit of uh, Second World War for the UK. Equivalent in the US would be the OSS, Office of Strategic Services. In fact, they shared a lot of technology, training, equipment, um, I think even personnel. So anyway, that, that's where the more famous well rod was developed. This is a spin-off. So Major Hugh Reeves was the designer of both of these, uh, among other things, at Station 9. And so the well rod was introduced in 1942 and did see moderate, a moderate amount of use, dropped to partisans and, and things. Um, it's an assassination weapon, as mentioned. It has a set of sights on it, like a, like a proper pistol, something to get hold of it by, a magazine for more than one shot. So it's single shot, but it's a repeater. This thing is not. This is the well rod boiled down to its purest essence, if you like. So probably the best thing to do is to show you how it works. Now there is a Mark I variant of this, which I have never seen. I don't know if it even exists. Imperial War Museum don't have one. And that was similar, but had a uh, housing for the firing rod on one side. So right away, the safety is this. It's a rocker. It's a little hard to show you, but you rock it back and forth. It won't move at the moment because we haven't got it cocked. So to do that, We've got two little ears or flanges here. We pull back that one, nearest the muzzle end, as it were, and we can then unscrew the breech. Some pretty hefty threads on there. And this bit, as noted, is just a silencer or suppressor. So in here are, I believe there's a seven... Um, Expansion chambers formed by metal baffles, but also with rubber wipes sandwiched between um, steel baffles as well. So multiple thick rubber wipes that this bullet has to pass through. It's completely sealed, sealed at the muzzle end with, with the wipe nearest the end, of course, and then the same at the back, so you can't look through it. We can unscrew the, the end here, but it's not going to show us that much. And there's a special tool needed to actually remove this baffle stack, wipe stack. So that's as much as I'm going to do today, because if I try to lever these out, I could damage them, and getting them back in is going to be a problem. So we'll screw the end cap back on. OK, guys, I wanted to go super close up on this one for you to show you a couple of features. Firstly, We've got the number 14 marked three times here on these three separate components. That's the serial number. I'm pointing that out because on this example, well, this is serial number 14 of the initial prototypes that were trialled in 1944. This is an SOE trials gun, uh, which makes it even more exciting, of course. <laughs> now, the other reason we're in close-up is to um, show you the detail of the firing mechanism. Not just how it loads and fires, but how the, this mechanism works. So if we unscrew the breech, so we pull back on that spring-loaded sort of ear there, and we unscrew. 
There's the end of the firing rod, which of course moves. Well, there we go. So that's it in its uh, ready to fire position. And it's sitting, I see it's very worn there. Well, it's worn bright. And it's sitting over a sear pin, which sits in the breech mechanism where my thumb is there. That's the sear pin. That holds back the striker, the firing pin of which we can see protruding through the breech face. So how does that work? Well, if we unscrew the lanyard loop, that gives you access to the firing pin, or rather the striker, and its spring. So quite a stout little strong spring there, and a striker component hollow it actually t accepts the uh, the spring up to uh, well that's why it's that shape and then there's a firing pin on the front of course and there's also another bright witness mark all the way around this shoulder here that's where the sear pin holds back this striker to then let it fly forward to shoot so I'll show you what I mean in fact the best way is with the breech in its um, uh, closed position, as it were. There's the there's the uh, the sear pin, and we can see that move. If we introduce this assembly into the back of the breech, and you watch that sear pin, which is in fired off position, i.e. in, as we see it pop up, as we introduce the striker, it forces it out of the way, and so that's what happens when it fires. This sear pin which is just, you know, it's just like a, operates like a sear, it holds the striker backwards, or to the, to the rear, I should say. So it holds it about there. And then when that pin is allowed to pop out, that's when it slams forward and fires the primer. So what's holding the sear pin in place? Well, if we put it back together, uh, let's remind you how, this, how the trigger works, and you should see that it all come together now. So screw that back together. We, uh, well, if we imagine we've inserted a, a cartridge, which we'd have to uh, unscrew the end cap to do, to withdraw the firing pin. We insert the cartridge. We screw in the breech. Now, this is where you have to make sure that your firing rod, your trigger rod, is actually in the rear ready to fire position so it sits over that sear pin uh, when it's screwed home but you can't do that yet so you need that out of the way in the fired position screw it all the way home till it clicks then you need to assert the rod to the rear i.e. in ready to fire position then you screw in your breech and that is forcing the striker forwards pushing the sear pin upwards against this end of the rod here, so there's a lot of tension here that I'm overcoming by turning this, and then there'll be a faint click. There's the faint click, and the whole thing is now cocked. There's your safety from before. You pull back on this, and then forward on the rod. Very awkward to do at this angle, if not impossible. <laughs> Let's turn it around. So eyes on the end of the rod there, pushing forward with the mechanism, and there goes the striker flying forward because that pin has been allowed to pop up out of the way of the striker. And pop goes the sleeve gun. And so we know that 150 of these were made. So the initial, uh, I believe it was initial 20 prototypes of, this, of which this is one, and we believe between 150 and 200 of these things would have been made. We're now happy, I think, with how this functions. In reality, that trigger, um, I don't know if you saw in our, in our opening, is actually a little awkward to, it's, it's awkward to roll back this rocker switch and then push forward. I wouldn't like to do that in a high stress situation of dropping a gun into my hand, ready to assassinate some no doubt very well protected individual and possibly just get shot immediately. I wouldn't fancy that for a number of reasons, not least because this is actually quite awkward to operate.
That's deliberate. It's so that you don't accidentally shoot off your only round, uh, potentially into your own leg or into a, an innocent civilian. So they've compromised on how tough this is to operate with the very obvious safety issues of having a gun with a trigger right where your fingers are. Extremely problematic from a safety point of view. Again, in that high stress situation, I think there'd be a lot of potential for accidentally having a finger over the muzzle when you pull the trigger or push the trigger, which is the problem with this. We, it is believed, or basically confirmed actually, that both of these were manufactured by BSA, Birmingham Small Arms, the Birmingham Small Arms Company. At the time it was discreet, well secret in fact, and so there were no readily available, uh, discernible markings for BSA, but subsequently it was revealed that BSA made these things, and they're made to, to you know, high standard, despite appearances. Now, Major Reeves, as mentioned, did develop other things for Station 9. Notably, he developed the very large sound suppressors for the SOE Sten guns, the silenced Sten guns, one of which is absolutely immense. You might, you might catch it on this channel at some point in the future. Um, and he, he survived the war, I guess, you know, being uh, a boffin based on, in, in the UK, you have a high, higher chance of surviving the war. Uh, unfortunately, he did die in 1955 trying to develop another sound suppression technology for jet engines. Um, he was unfortunately um, too close to a, to a running jet engine and was sucked into it and unfortunately sustained fatal injuries. So that's where his story ended. After his, um, perhaps his most famous invention, the well rod had done some pretty good work on the continent, if I can put it like that. Thanks as always for watching everybody. We appreciate it all the more right now because we've actually just passed uh, 200,000 subscribers. Um, really can't thank you enough for, for boosting us up past that milestone. Um, needless to say, we would like even more. So please do continue to like, subscribe, hit the bell, all the usual YouTube stuff. Um, keep an eye on this channel. You can catch me over on the GameSpot. Uh, video game channel as well still we're still doing that we have our um, reams of social media content as well facebook twitter instagram we even have an old-fashioned website and an even more old-fashioned set of three physical sites that you can come and visit as well which we'd also appreciate you doing uh, especially while the weather's nice take care guys thank you very much <laughs> <laughs>